the virtual fencing. I firmly believe that it's the next evolution in, in range management. I'm a preacher for it and I'm only one year in. And I've had to write a couple checks and I'm still tickled to death with this thing. We can't be sustainable if we don't make money. And that's where if I'm building fence, I'm probably not making as much money. But I didn't have to have labor, I didn't have to have a four-wheeler, I didn't have to have a fence stretcher. We didn't have to have a fence charger, we didn't have to pray for rain so the fence charger would work. If you've got areas that are really sensitive and don't want to have to put up a $20,000 a mile fence, and virtual fence is the tool. By the time they've overgrazed it, you're too late. These grazing patterns and the data that, that we're going to be able to glean from the herd manager is going to be invaluable, I think. Virtual fence worked for the cattle, worked for the wildlife, worked for the tribe work for all parties involved. It's a cow-calf operation. We have dry land wheat and an irrigated farm. We cover approximately 20,000 acres of deeded and rented ground. I work with two of my brothers and there are two other brothers nearby and sons and grandsons. After the Cold Springs fire, we lost all of our infrastructure, so we had to take a couple years off. Uh, had to sell the remaining cow herd. We lost 85 miles of fence. We're coming up on the end of our first year of utilizing the virtual fence. How the virtual fence system works is that it's a control box that send out a GPS signal to the caller. When they walk up to the virtual fence, they will receive a buzzing noise that's clearly audible. They get closer, they'll receive a, another audible sound, and then the third time, they'll receive the shock. Software engineers, this is their bread and butter. This is not that big a deal, I don't think. It's attaching this to a cow in a safe manner, how the shock works. One of them's positive, one of them's negative, and this is an insulating this, this chain link. The caller checks in every half hour, gives a GPS location of where the cow is, and also receives any instructions that you may have sent out. The collaring itself took about three head, and we had it figured out. It's not rocket science, it's really not. So if I create events on my laptop, I send it through the internet, it goes to the tower, it sends the signal to the caller, and says there's now a virtual fence in such and such a location. The training protocol is four days. By day four, they've all got the word. And we turn cows out shortly thereafter. It's a tool that doesn't involve diesel and a tractor or a cat or a rangeland drill. We can use the cows as our management tool post-fire. And it's actually worked quite well. Now we can see these yearlings right here. We're learning new things about animal behavior. The yearlings, for example, we use those in our fallow fields to attack a certain weed that is herbicide resistant. And so we can put animals in our fallow field, use a virtual fence to crowd them into that area, suppress that weed, pull them out, put them somewhere else. 20% of our ground's never really been utilized, even close to its maximum potential. And so, with the virtual fence, we can encourage these cows to graze these areas, to utilize it, and that's, that's money in our pocket. My great-grandmother and grandfather homesteaded well, about a mile and a half from here. We're sitting here on part of a 9,000 acre block, plus the other people we lease from, which makes it 15,000 plus. I can't afford to fence it. We uh, have 270 head in the breeding group and uh, overall 500 head of cattle that we're taking care of at this time. If we're going to manage this effectively, we need some type of boundary or some way to manage the cattle there. We didn't financially want to build fence, and so virtual fence was obviously a good choice for that. This is all the properties that we utilize here. And 
This portion here, we had leased in the past and we built new fences on in 2015 on all this ground, which is approximately half of the total portions. For the grazing data, we can follow the grazing of, of a whole herd or we can follow the grazing of an individual cow and that makes it really cool. When we did the training, we put this small pasture in here and Mike brought the cows in 20 a day. And so here we are adding them. Up here at the top is the date. And so it shows how fast it's going. It's really fast speed. But you can see the cows are staying in the vents. They'll come down to there and touch it and go back up. And there's no structure around that. That's just open country like you've in got fact, on you your In fact, you go film. up there, you think, why are they even staying you, in? You can I see mean. how they come to the corner. See that? We can actually move these fences as we see our grazing patterns need to change. And where if you build a hardwire fence, you've got it built and you're not going to pull it all up and change it because you added a water development or they weren't grazing appropriately. It's a tool. It's a tool that he can use, but it's not, it's not him. You do need to be there and see where you're at and what you're doing and how the cattle are responding to things. It has worked amazingly well. We've, we've yeah. both been very pleased. He loves to look at his, his vent fence every morning and drinks his coffee and make sure his cows are doing okay. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. I have over 15,000 acres of farmland. We have another 15,000 acres of pasture land, all mostly leased. As far back as 2013, I felt like cattle needed to be integrated on my cropland. We really believe we can get to a situation where we can graze cover crops, uh, older crop residues in a more condensed situation and try to get some of those benefits out of mob grazing. And so the first thing we were able to use the vents for were just to see where the cows were at. Um, second thing was to kind of just really look at grazing trends. And then thirdly was, you know, if the cow was out, where did I have to go to go get it in? We haven't even, even brushed the surface with regard to, hey, look, there's never been a cow on that hillside probably since the dawn of time. It's easy access to water, but yet the cow's too lazy to go up there. We need to get to the point where we can use the vents to, to push them up on to areas that have never been grazed before and rest our areas that haven't. I estimate that we saved three months of labor, not having just somebody on the ground daily trying to keep the fence up and trying to get the hot wire out ahead of the cattle. When we talk about conservation, I mean, the list is a mile long, from pheasants to deer to antelope to, you know, whatever else has to deal with that physical fence. I think the biggest barrier to wildlife is when a physical fence falls in disrepair. The wildlife can't see that fence. One of the things I heard was, well, Fish and wildlife are gonna have access to that and they're gonna be able to see. I've never seen a fish and wildlife person drive by and move my cows or take my cows or beam them up. You know, there's none of that kind of stuff going on. I think virtual fence gives us the opportunity to be proactive, working within the ecosystem, not against the ecosystem. So if you start to take a holistic approach and, and outlook on everything, Part of that ecosystem includes regulatory policymakers, you know, landlords, neighbors. It, it's not the actual cow, you know, it's not my crops. They play a piece, but those are all part of the ecosystem. How, how could you not get excited about that? that? That ability to sit at a computer and know where those cows are and plan where they need to be. 